Greetings and welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, computer's back up. I am recording back on the same computer. Uh, I'll tell you, man, beauty of Linux, man. If my Windows computer had shut down and I was trying to rebuild the Windows computer, even having the backups that I had, it would have literally taken me two or three days to get the computer back up and running. Um, but with this, you know, like I said, if you missed it, the SanDisk completely died. Um, it will not even boot at all anymore. It, it, nothing at all. So I'm just going to get a hold of the SanDisk and say, uh, refund me money. I'm not buying your products again. Well, not those. I actually use SanDisk USB drives without a problem. And uh, the uh, this computer here that this Debian is running on, the there is an SSD in there that actually gets more use than this one. I'm not sure what it is with this one, but whatever. But anyway, even though the disk isn't working at all, I was able to take a system image. I was able to uh, mount a certain specific point on that system image, grab the two home folders, for the two user accounts on this. Um, I bought a uh, one terabyte Seagate uh, hard drive with a six gigabit per second um, transfer rate, plug that in instead and um, installed Linux Mint. I have 18.2, so that's the thing that changed it, which I was at 18.1, now I'm 18.2. Um, but I went ahead and did 18.2 and then um, dropped the two home folders on here. Now what you do if you, wanna, if you need to do that is you create a, just a sub, a third account and then from that account, you create the other two accounts that you have, make those pseudo user groups if you want to do that. And then um, what I do then is I take out the drive. I basically close the thing, uh, close the computer down. I transfer it back over to the computer. And all I did is simply copy the two home folders, overwriting the two home folders that were already pre-existing. And then what you need to do is boot back into your third account. You need to change the ownership to each folder to its respective user and group reboot the computer and everything is exactly as it was. I mean, if you go back and um, obviously the only thing that has really changed is a few of the individual items are as they were. So here is my screen. Um, I didn't do anything else in the configuration. Everything is, is exactly where it is. The Caden Live icon changed. Um, I like this new one better actually very much nicer looks like a movie strip instead of it I don't know what it used to be um, some versions change I think my OBS studio version is is a different version than it was before um, everything else is exactly as it was um, even my theme files icons everything I mean it was so fast it took me literally it took me an hour to get the entire computer back up and running and so Yay for the power of Linux. And in the middle of all that, before I even had a chance to buy the hard drive, I still did not miss editing the video because I dropped that same home folder on this Debian computer here. And uh, when I did that, I was able to boot right into there, push out my video. And so there, I, I was on time. I was a few hours later than I wanted to be, but I was on time putting a video up on my Christian channel. So we did the authority of the scriptures. So if you're not checking out my Christian channel, it's our walk in Christ. Um, and um, you can find that and let me know in the comments if you need me to put that somewhere. Uh, but today what we are going to do is I'm going to follow up on the Amazon cash order. Um, my Amazon box came today. It took exactly one week to get here. I placed the order last Thursday and I got the email early today to, uh, to pick it up. And I'll tell you that this this shipped way faster. I'm used to waiting for almost two weeks for Amazon orders. This was one week, so it's a, a lot faster than uh, than I'm used to. I think they're really trying to prioritize that, and I don't have Prime or anything. So for to follow up, if you didn't don't know what I'm talking about, you can now go and place an Amazon order with cash by utilizing the gift cards. And my town has one of the Amazon pickup locations, and so what I did here is. Um, I went on, I wanted to get a few things and uh, one of those being a new camera. And so I threw the items in the cart and I was just going to go ahead and ship it to my address, which I usually do. But unfortunately now you, thanks probably to Samsung, you can no longer ship lithium ion batteries through the post office. You used to be able to, um, as long as they were declared, you can't anymore. So you had to ship them to a location. Well, where I live is not a safe location to send a package to and there's no guarantee I'm going to be home during that store window. So I start looking around because I thought out of town a little bit. I thought there was an Amazon location, but apparently there's not. But there's one right downtown State College, one block from the post office that I check several times a week anyway. And so I go down there. It doesn't cost anything extra to ship the order there. All you need to do is just go to that store's webpage, which is amazon.com slash state college for this one. And 
simply click the button to add that store to as one of my shipping locations, if you're familiar with Amazon. And then I put the order in the cart. I knew exactly what it was. I went down to the local store that can refill gift cards, which there happens to be one one block over. You can't buy the gift card there, but you can refill it. So Sheets and CVS are the two places in this area. You can check Amazon's website for places in your area. Um, but basically I go into the store, I dropped cash, they added it to the gift card in the parking lot of the store right after I added the cash. I pushed the submit button on the phone, not the app. I don't use the app on the phone, just on the website, Firefox on my iPhone. Clicked send the button, it processed everything. So I placed this order from Amazon, came with cash in one week, shipped to not my address. So now it is feasibly possible to anonymously, with cash, shipping to a specific location, buy something on Amazon, pay with cash, with a gift card, and then go to a third-party location to pick it up. Much as I bust on Amazon, praise for Amazon on that. Of course, I opened the initial package um, because you go in there and there's a place where you there have ba basically box cutters. You can open up your box, make sure everything's in there. You can throw away your cardboard. In my case, I wanted to keep the box, um, but I did want to open it up just to make sure, verify everything was in there. And behold, everything's in here. So it only took one week, paid with cash, and um, I'll show you what I what I picked up. Um, first, some um, some cheap made in China tripod thing. Uh, basically, the reason I got this camera, this is a 4K sports camera, um, competitor to GoPro, but I don't support GoPro because they run on a planned obsolescence model and I do not support companies that do that. Um, basically with GoPro every single year they release a new line of cameras. You can no longer find their old cameras. They pull them all off the market and that allows them to raise the prices significantly every year because it's the new version. Well, give me last year's version. I'd happily buy it for 7,500 bucks. Couldn't do that. Um, now, the reason I wanted to get a camera like this is my outdoor philosophies, of course, are outside, and I usually use record them on my iPhone, and then I have this big, bulky iPhone thing that actually works fairly well. Um, but the other thing is, as I'm doing more and more things on my Christian channel, I'm going to be bringing back the Daily Walk series, which is where I'm walking in the woods, and I watch some of those, and they're hard to watch. Uh, but uh, check out the Our Walk in Christ. In fact, I'll go ahead and put a link below that to that channel. Um, but the problem is with those, as I'm literally holding a cell phone like this, where's my phone at? I'm literally holding my iPhone like this, walking and talking, and so you're getting the bounce of your walk, even as I'm trying to walk, and then of course you get some of this, and so you end up kind of getting seasick watching those videos. So I wanted to get something with a little bit better stabilization, so sports cameras are the way to go. So I got this guy here, which is... Um, <clears throat> Basically, what this guy here is a, uh, uh, it's a camera mount. It can mount to any camera system. It can be held back, so I can now hold this back. It's a lot better than doing this, you know. But this guy here can also fold out into a tripod, so I can use this to set my camera on a picnic table to record. So that's why I wanted to pick up uh, this guy here. So. Very nice, just, I don't know, paid maybe 10 bucks for it, I don't know. Um, but there's, let's see what else is down here. Eh. More stuff, I'll have to look at what that does. Um, <clears throat> of course, because I am unfortunately a child of the 80s, I and I've been collecting some of the old things, I decided I'd go ahead and get season two of Wonder Years. <laughs> um, I've been trying to collect some of the old seasons. I have all the full house, and I'm, now I'm collecting the Wonder Years series. Um, let's go ahead and get to the uh, to the big thing in the pack, and that is I picked this one up here. So, in doing my research, it turns out that GoPro and about a hundred of these other cameras are all are all manufactured essentially in the exact same factory. So it doesn't really matter which one you get; they're essentially all the same. So I went with this Acon Grant brand. There were a few other brands that I could choose from. I went with this one because this one is supposed to have um, some inner camera stabilization that the other brand I was looking at did not actually have, which I think was the Acoso. So this one here is supposed to have um, some more uh, camera stabilization, a little bit better. Uh, it is wireless. You should be able to access it wirelessly with an app. So I'm actually going to use my completely non-active um, burner phone to do wireless interactions because you can basically control the camera from this assuming I can get everything to work we'll give it a try um, but then this camera here way better than a GoPro these actually have a lot of information at least I think it does 
Um, so there's a lot of information, a lot of things in these boxes. So here we have the camera, which has a camera mount here. Um, and a uh, basically this guy here is in a, um, I think this is a clip one. I have to see which one this is. I guess that just sits there. Um, it's inside of a waterproof case, which I might have to read through the instructions on how to get this thing out of the waterproof case. I will probably not be needing it in a waterproof case much. Um, but regardless, um, we do have this guy here, waterproof uh, case, and um, I'm also going to have to get it out to interact with the camera slot and uh, things like that. So. I'll have to read through the manuals here to figure out how to get this guy out of the case. It uh, looks like it probably just slides, but I'm not seeing the, uh, I'm not getting much slide. Reviews though did say that this, this thing is actually kind of a pain to get out of the case, but I don't really care. Um, in fact, if it's a pain to get out of the case, it's probably a pain for water to get into the case. So I'm okay with that. Um, this one also contains, and I think this one only contains one battery. Some of these contain two batteries, some contain one. So I do have one battery here. Um, I'll see if there's another one in here. But basically, I have one battery here. And I don't know if there might be a battery actually in the camera. I thought some of these contained uh, two batteries. Oh, no, it does. Yeah, there is actually a camera. There is battery in there. So there we go. It's actually telling me there's no card there. But let's see. It is working. So it does have the downside of these, um, at least in the current mode, is it does seem to have like a more of a fisheye lens to it. And so um, that's kind of, for me, the downside of the fisheye lens. But I looked everything over and I said, okay, is that something that I really care um, care about? I'm like, eh, I don't mind. We'll, we'll make it work. So there's a battery in there. There is one extra battery in the box. So it does indeed come with two batteries. We have... Oh boy, yet another USB charger. I have like hundreds of these. Do you guys need USB chargers? Um, we also have this guy here is a, um, uh, is a, basically it's like a wrist strap. This is not waterproof, but it does actually allow you if you're doing things like, you know, skateboarding, biking, whatever else, basically it's a wrist strap and there's a strap with it and you can uh, put it onto your wrist and then you can actually click the record or click the camera um, to take photos or take, um, uh, you can take photos or you can take um, uh, stills with it. And then in the bottom half of the box, uh, these things come with a lot of accessories. Um, we have another mount here, which is more of a, a more traditional mount. So the mount that we have here is more of like a, a camera type mount, which has um, this type of, uh, kind of like this type of, of um, uh, geary type mount. So you can twist this rotate it the direction that you want. Um, but you can also take it out of the waterproof case, snap the camera into this one. It has a more traditional screw-on type mount either from either direction. So it can screw on from the top or from the bottom. Uh, this is a wrist strap, which is for the um, for the camera. Hey, there's my USB cable. I, I'm so glad this thing came with this. Um, I didn't know what I would do without a hundred of these laying around, just to let you know. And then we have a variety of other mounts. So here we have a couple of sticky mounts. So you can literally suction these guys onto your car. You could use this guy as a dashboard cam if you want. It doesn't have a lot of battery power. Um, this one here is a bicycle mount. So it comes with that. And I might actually take this back in the woods with me when I do my cameras because I'll I'll be always be finding, finding trees or something to mount this camera to. <laughs> That's kind of what I'm gonna be doing. Oh, there's just um, uh, just a bunch of a bunch of uh, these guys here. Just variety of. Or do you want to mount it this direction, or do you want to mount the camera in this direction? So there's a lot of different a lot of different mounts. Um, this guy here looks like this one is actually a clip-on mount. So hey, I can take this, associate this right here. Uh, clip this guy onto here and get me a body cam. Oh, yeah, body cam. <laughs> Just don't tell the Baltimore police. <clears throat> At least don't tell them it always records. All right, so we have some 3M sticky tape, uh, some double-sided stickies, just enabling me to 
stick on various things in various locations. This one here looks like probably a back cover or something to this, or or maybe, maybe it's a front cover, I don't know. Some type of cover. Hmm. Piles of more straps. There's a few more of those. Okay, so here is something that I can use to uh, screw onto this type of mount. So I can screw one of these more traditional mount systems onto one of these mounts. Let me take one of these out of here so you can see what I'm talking about. You can screw that onto this, and then there's an ability to rotate this in a variety of different directions. And then you can utilize, actually, we could do this one here, mount this guy here, and then where's another one of these mounts? Oh, it's down here somewhere. Where'd you go? Yeah, I could just use this one. You'd, you'd basically use uh, one of these recording uh, spinny mounts. You just unscrew it, plop it right in over here, screw this guy back in, and now you can have you know, a, a bottom mounting or a top mounting bicycle mount onto any given device. So there's uh, one of those, and let's see, what's this one here? This guy here will actually allow you to um, basically do more of an inverted mount. So you could do just something like this. So a lot of mounting options inside these cameras. Um, that's that's really, really cool how many uh, mounts these things come with. And I don't know, you guys let me know if you have GoPro cameras, if they come with this many mounts or, or more or less mounts or whatever else. We also have down here... Oh, uh, I'm, guess, I'm guessing it's, it's a uh, like a strap uh, that you can uh, wrap around your hand here. Just a basic strap. And we get a remote thing. So we have a photo button. A Basically, it's just a little quick guide on using the remote capture. I'm wondering if this thing probably operates on watch batteries. Yeah, there's uh, tiny screws in there. So I'm guessing this guy here operates on watch batteries. And then we just have a little user manual here. It identifies everything that should be in the box. Okay, so let's see if I can see real quickly here how to get this guy out. Congratulations. Turn the power on, turn the power off. On and repeatedly press the power mode button to cycle through the various camera modes. There is a camera app. I'm not sure I'd completely trust it on a production phone, but I'm going to go ahead and try and install it on my uh, on my cheapo phone over here. It does say it does 32 or 62 gigabyte cards. Um, what I'm actually going to want to probably experiment with is um, seeing if it can take 64s as well. I'm pretty sure I have 32, uh, 16, 32, and 64s available right now. Um, one thing is really, I can't seem to get the... Uh, can't seem to get the uh, waterproof and cover off so and I'm not seeing instructions specifically however looking at it it's it's definitely a slide mount type thing so let me uh, let me work with that let me just have a quick look at this yeah it tells me it's a latch well, maybe it actually do oh, it does clip up aha it clips up Clips up, then latches out. That's what it is. It clips up and then latches out. I was thinking it slides, but it doesn't. Clip up, latches out. Okay, let me see this guy here. Is this just a replacement latch? What this actually looks like is just a, simply a replacement latch or something. I don't know. Click this guy out. Of course, we're going to take off the plastic off of these, these guys here. wire rope okay and then we'll go ahead and take this off so here is we'll take this guy off so yeah it does have clearly does have a, a uh, fisheye lens there 
Um, we have a micro HDMI, we have a micro USB, we have a slot there, um, we have the power and the mode. Okay. Let's see what I got in the way of SD cards that can be used. I got a 64, I got a 32. Not sure if there's anything on this card or not, but uh, I'm not thinking there is, so I'm just gonna go ahead and switch this guy on. All right, so there we are. We have switched this guy on. So it's, um, I mean, it does have some fish eyeing effects, but really it's, it's, I mean, if you're close, you can see it's fish eye, but once you get back a distant, a decent range, it's not, it's not all that bad. So actually, that's pretty cool. And actually, with the outdoor philosophies and stuff I do, you'll actually see quite a bit more of the of the background that I have. And so that's actually pretty cool. So we get that. Now there's uh, various mode options. So I have a 12 megapixel wide. Settings. All right, so... It does not have a touch screen. Uh, so there's no touch screen. So there's a uh, handles on either side here. We're just gonna go ahead and look at the video resolution. So I can do uh, 1080p 60, 1080p um, 30, there's uh, 720. And there's also options there for your um, Okay, there are options there for your uh, 4K and 2.7K. 25 frames per second 4K, 30 frames per second on, on that. So let me... Uh, looping video, let's look at that. Timestamp. So you can do timestamp on, timestamp off. There's exposures, so you can adjust your exposure settings. Photo resolution, burst photo, time lapse, continuous lapse, power frequency. There's your language, date and time, sound indicator. You can set it upside down. There's a screensaver. Okay, let's go ahead and Go ahead and uh, format the card, say yes, waiting, and it's now complete. So let's go ahead and go back into our settings. So it's defaulting to 1080p 30 frames per second. So let me um, I'm gonna go back into settings, look at my video resolution. So right now, actually, it's only giving me the options for 720p and for 1080p. Um, the other options are in the screen, but I'm not seeing the ability to select those. So I'm wondering if that's maybe the size of the card or something like that. So what we're gonna do is uh, what would I want to do? And I would actually want to do 1080p um, 30 personally, although I might experiment with 4K. So let's go ahead and um, go ahead and power this off. I'm going to drop in there a bigger card. I'm going to see what it does with the 64-bit card in there. And let me check the uh, size. Oh, you know, that the problem is that this is a 32, um, but it's a number four card. I think you have to have quite a bit higher of a card to do, uh, to do uh, HDMI. This guy here is a 64. Let's see what it says.
So it does read this card. Okay, yep, so with this card here, the 64 bit, uh, 64 gigabyte card, um, now I can change between any of the available screen resolutions, which are 720p 60 frames per second, 720p 120 frames per second, 2.7K 30 frames per second, 4K 25 frames per second, 1080p 30 frames per second, 1080p 60 frames per second. So one of the things I'm actually going to attempt to do is I wanna see, because people are always talking about can Linux edit 4K video. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and take some 4K video here and we'll see. We'll see if Linux can, can edit 4K video. So now we're gonna go back out of there Okay, so now it's, yep, 4K. And it actually, though, looks as though um, the fisheye will change based upon what your, uh, based upon the aperture. So looking at my video mode, I, it doesn't look like I have quite as much 4K. And according to this, I have, is that right, two hours? It's about either two hours or two minutes. Let's go ahead and record, see what happens. Ready, Kitty? So we are recording. So the next thing I want to do is I want to see um, how well this guy uh, records audio. Right, Kitty? Right? Yeah. Whoa, it's a cat. It lives. Whoa! <laughs> so he can see its fish eye there. Well, I can see its fish eye there. Um, but yeah, it's actually not not a bad fish eye from from a distance out. So if you're holding it out from a distance, it's actually not all that bad. But you get really close, it'll fish eye quite a bit. So there's that. All right, let's go ahead and um, turn this guy off. And let me see actually. Let's see actually if I push the this button, it should give me a picture. Yep, and then if I push this button, it should start recording. Yep, so it does record just as fine with the uh, little camera strap, so that's actually pretty cool. And it'll stop just as fine. All right, so that actually took a little bit out of the battery, not a lot, but uh, it did seem to take a little bit. Oh, there's waiting for Wi-Fi connection. So we're going to have to read the manual on that part. And now we're just looking at the pictures on the camera. So oh, focus that in a little bit better. Okay. So definitely horrible quality on the uh, on that, but that's actually what I would expect. All right. So the next thing we're going to test is uh, I'm going to see how well this does. Uh, one thing I'm going to see is can I use this as a external webcam? In fact, there's that USB thing. Right. Find an appropriate spot. All 
Okay, well, if it can be used as a separate webcam, I need to get it set up or maybe have it plugged in when the computer's turned on, something like that. Well, anyway, um, I think that was a, that was kind of a, a fun experiment. Um, all right, yep, it's connected to the computer right now. All right, well, anyway, um, that was a cool experiment with uh, with Amazon, so... Indeed, I can go downtown. I can pay cash for an Amazon order. It ships to a local store downtown in, uh, you know, one week's time, and uh, that's a really good, uh, really good thing for us privacy guys who want to make sure that we can, um, uh, we want to make sure that we can um, uh, pay cash instead of using our credit cards online. We can pick up an order instead of having it shipped directly to our house. So I think this is a great win for uh, for consumers. So anyway, there's the new camera. I expect to start, uh, uh, I'll start using that camera here uh, pretty soon for, um, um, for the outdoor philosophies and some things on the Christian channel. So keep an eye out for that. And um, should, be, uh, should be a news tomorrow evening and not sure what else I have going on. Well, well, we should be back to a, back to a normal schedule here soon. So. Uh, with that being said, uh, thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.